Hello everybody, I'm Chicago Geographer, and welcome back to the Geotips YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the different camera generations that Google uses for its Street View coverage. Now, here we are at geotips.net. If we scroll down to this section of the general tips and tricks, you can see some explanations about Google Street View camera quality. So there are four different generations of Google Street View cameras, and these are really useful to help you narrow down the country that you're in. There is a great spreadsheet document here that explains everything, but we're going to take a look at that in a little bit here. But first, I'm going to walk through four different examples of the four different camera types. Camera generation is an example of a meta clue in GeoGuessr, which is a clue that exists only because Google drove past with its Street View camera. In other words, it's something that would not be there if you went to that location in real life. So let's go ahead and take a look at the four different camera types. The first one is Generation 1 coverage. This is the famous blurry camera, potato camera, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is the first camera used by Google, and it is pretty low quality, as you can see. Uh, now, this was used extensively during the late 2000s, when Google was first starting to roll out its Street View coverage. As you can see, it is distinctly blurry and low quality. Another notable feature about Gen 1 coverage is that it's very prone to visual glitches. If we pan up to the sky here, you can see all of these crazy looking lines and glitches and things in the sky. There are lots of different visual glitches that appear with Gen 1. It's very prone to it being a low quality camera, as well as on sunny days like this one, you're more likely to see things like this in the sky. It's extremely difficult to read any signs in this camera quality, making it one of the most difficult and annoying kinds of cameras to be dropped in in a world map. Thankfully though, most of the popular user-created maps try to avoid this camera coverage because it's extremely annoying to end up in Gen 1 coverage. However, you do still run into it from time to time, so it is worth knowing. These days, almost all Gen 1 coverage is found in the United States and Australia. However, there is a very, very small bit of Gen 1 in New Zealand and Canada, as well as a handful of European countries. However, that coverage is mostly negligible, and you're probably never going to run into it in your gameplay, so just keep in mind that Gen 1 is mostly found in the US and Australia. The next camera we'll talk about is Generation 2. This was the next camera used by Google. It's a little bit of a step up from Gen 1, as you can see. This location was taken from the Northern Cape in South Africa. And the most distinct feature of this camera generation are the two sort of circular blurs at the top and the bottom of the camera. Uh, these are referred to as halos by the GeoGuessr community. The one in the sky usually has a sort of pinkish purple discoloration, which makes it pretty easy to spot against a blue sky, as you can see here. At the bottom of the panorama, the entire Google car is covered by this large circular blur. These halos are a great way to identify Gen 2 right away. The picture quality is a little bit better than Gen 1. Uh, it's easier to read signs in this kind of location, however, it's still not great, uh, but it is a step up from Generation 1. Our next camera is the Generation 3 camera. This is the standard camera used in almost every single country that has Street View these days. Uh, this is a standard HD image. Nothing too fancy about it, just, you know, your standard Google Street View. Uh, now, Gen 3 is notable for having almost all of the Google car meta. You can see in this location the little antenna hiding behind the smaller blur of the car here. Almost all car meta is found in Generation 3 coverage. This location was taken from Estonia, and as you can see, there's nothing too special about it. Standard quality image, uh, definitely a huge step up from Gen 1 and Gen 2. Signs are very legible in Gen 3 coverage, and it's found in most countries around the world with Street View, so it's a good one to know and be able to recognize. Last up on our list is the newest camera, which is Generation 4. This is a very high quality camera. As you can see here, you can see a lot more of the fine details on things in the distance, such as this hill right here. Uh, this location was taken from the South Island of New Zealand, and as you can see, it's very high quality, very vibrant colors as well. A really good way to identify Generation 4 coverage is this sort of saturated look to it. You can see the vibrant green here in the fields. The sky can look very blue, as you can see here, that's such a deep and vibrant color. Uh, as well as the sun can look very bright, almost overexposed in some locations. But a general way to identify Gen 4 is this extremely vibrant and colorful sort of look to it. Another notable feature of Gen 4 coverage is that a lot of the Google cars used have this sort of blue color to them. It's a little hard to make out here, but you can see a little bit of that blue patch there on the ground. Blue is pretty common for Gen 4, however there are some other cars used, but blue is one that you'll see quite a lot in many different countries. 
Now I'm going to show all four camera generations in one single location. I'm going to be using Chicago for this, and we are here in Grant Park looking at a Gen 1 image from, I believe, August, yeah, August 2007. So this is Gen 1, and if you want to do this yourself in a Google Street View location, you can click on this little clock icon in the top left, and then drag this slider to choose different panoramas from throughout Google Street View's history there. So of course to start, here is Gen 1, you can see that it's quite blurry. You can also see sort of the discoloration and visual glitches here, especially around the bright sun in the sky. Overall though, it's your standard Gen 1 image, pretty blurry, not easy to read this street sign of course, as you can see there. Now let's check out Generation 2 coverage. We'll drag the slider here to April 2009 and click on the panorama. Uh, now we're in Generation 2 coverage. This is also a really cool feature. You can see how it's almost like a time machine here. Uh, you can see this new building being built there, uh, as well as this tower, which has just been expanded as well. Uh, but that's besides the point. You can see these two halos here, which are very distinct in Gen 1. Again, that pink discoloration here on the top and then the circular blur covering up the car itself on the bottom. Uh, you can see, again, it's a little bit easier to see the street sign. We can tell that we are on Columbus here. Uh, this one is a little harder to see, but you can barely see that it says Jackson as well. So Gen 2 camera, a little bit of a step up from Gen 1. It's still not the greatest quality, but it's a little bit better overall. Moving on to Gen 3, we'll drag the slider over to May 2014. Here in Gen 3 coverage, you can see that the street signs have become much easier to read. You can pretty clearly see that it says Columbus and Jackson here. You can see here that it's your standard image, a lot more pleasant looking to the eye. You don't have those large blurs in the bottom or the top, or those visual glitches around the sky either. So this is your standard camera that you'll find all around the world. And moving on to the Gen 4 coverage here, we'll drag it all the way to 2019. This is from August 2019, and you can see it's popped into full HD here. Absolutely no trouble at all reading the street signs here, even the farther away one with Jackson Drive, and you can see that it's just much nicer looking. Colors are more vibrant, you can see more of the deeper blues and greens in the trees in the sky, as well as just more of the finer details on these buildings in the distance as well. So Gen 4, the newest camera coverage. You can also pan over to the sky and see that sort of overexposed look, especially around the sun there. So if you ever want to take the time to compare different camera generations, I would suggest coming over to Google Street View, go into a major city somewhere in the United States or maybe Australia, and checking out this clock feature and just scrolling it back and forth, checking out the different panoramas and comparing the different Street View. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the camera explanation spreadsheet. This is a really nice resource with everything compacted into one place. This spreadsheet was created by Alloc and it's a really useful resource, so I thank you to him for compiling this for the community to use and enjoy. You can take a look at the explanation for what all the four different generations look like, when they were taken, some example locations as well. There's another example of all the generations of camera in one spot here as well. And it also walks you through how to take a look at it yourself there with this little example picture. Now another really useful visualization for the generations is this map here showing where you can find the different camera generations in countries around the world. You can see here that the United States, Australia, and New Zealand have all four different camera generations marked. Uh, you can also visualize where Gen 2 is most common in countries like South Africa as well as Finland. You can also see countries that have only one camera type, such as Germany having only Gen 2, or Russia having only Generation 3 coverage. This is another really useful tool to use to help learn camera generations, and a great way to start memorizing this critical component of metagaming. In addition to this section on geotips, all of the individual country pages will explain which cameras are used in that country as well. So if we click on the Europe section here, and click on, say, France, for example, we can scroll down here and see that Gen 2, 3, and 4 are found in France. Now let's click on Turkey. We click on Turkey here and click on the camera generation section. We can see here that it is Gen 3 and 4 that you can find in Turkey. So all the country pages on Geotips will explain the different cameras you can find in that country. The next thing I'm going to do here is play a game on the standard world map created by GeoGuessr themselves and explain the different camera generations that we get in each location. I'm playing this map in the hopes that we will come across a Generation 1 location because, as I said, most of the user-created popular world maps do not have Gen 1 coverage included. 
Now I'm just going to do a quick no moving game just to show off each location and the camera that it has. So let's go ahead and hop into the first one. This location uses Gen 3 camera coverage. As you can see, it's a standard picture quality, nothing too fancy about it. It doesn't have that vibrant, colorful look to it like Gen 4 does. That's a good way to differentiate Gen 3 and Gen 4. Now I'm going to try my best to choose the right country here. I think I'm going to guess Serbia for this location. Let's see if I'm right about that. And it was Serbia. Great. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I got the country right. Let's move on to the next location. Uh, round number two. Oh, good. We've got Gen 2 coverage here. Uh, now you can tell Gen 2, as I've said, from these two halos, the circular blur at the bottom and this ring in the sky as well, with that kind of discolored look to it. It's actually not as apparent in this location, but you can still see that clear ring here around in the top of the sky. Uh, now, based on this landscape and the fact that we're driving on the left, I'm going to have to say we are in South Africa for this location. Let's click here and hope for the best. Excellent, it was. Next round, what are we going to get? Excellent, well, we've ended up in Gen 4. Pretty good sampling so far. Uh, now, this location you can see is Gen 4. Again, it's very vibrant looking. Uh, a good thing to look for in this spot specifically is this overexposed sky. You can see these really just bright colors happening here all around the sun and the nearby clouds. Again, you can see the colors are more vibrant here, especially that red. It really pops there on that reflector pole. And so this location should be the United States. And it looks like we're somewhere in Pennsylvania based on the state highway shields. So we'll click there. There we go. Wow, pretty far west there. Okay. Next round, will we get Gen 1? Uh, it's not looking too good right now. Now this location is actually a little bit tricky as the sun here is quite overexposed and bright. Now a good way to double check is to check on the colors here. You can see that they aren't super vibrant. Uh, in Gen 4 you'd expect this car to pop out a little bit more with its red or the green on these trees to be a little bit more vibrant. But overall here this is not as vibrant so this is a Generation 3 location. Uh, now based on everything here I think we are in Chile. Uh, I'm going to guess somewhere down here and hope for the best. Okay, no, it's Argentina, but still in that sort of area. We're just doing this as an example. Moving on to the final round, let's see if we get Gen 1. We've landed in the United States here once again in Illinois, uh, and this is Gen 4 coverage once again. You can see that very bright, overexposed look in the sky, and these really vibrant colors all around here as well. So this is a Generation 4 location. So we didn't actually end up in a Generation 1 location in this game, but hopefully the explanations in the first part of this video were suitable enough to show you guys what Generation 1 looks like. That's going to do it for this explanation of the four camera generations used by Google. We hope you enjoyed and we hope it was useful. And as always, make sure to check out geotips.net for more GeoGuessr tips and tricks. Until next time, thanks for watching everybody and we will see you later.